so I just got through like like a complete night of just working on a bunch of school assignments. Not really a bunch, kind of just one. Um, for the most part, I'm like making this presentation for one of my classes. So I'm trying to like make all the slides look certain ways and stuff like that. Just trying to be like, you know, as creative as I can, kind of enjoying the process. And um, just along with that, like, you know, I was listening to music, so at the time, kind of went by a lot faster, and I'm about getting ready to go to bed. Uh, by the way, the workout footage footage uh, that you're seeing is a workout I did earlier today, so like in the morning, and I was like, okay, it, it would make sense for me to work out, you know, because I have the time to do so, to work out earlier this morning, and then I can like uh, edit the video and record over it. Uh, later in the day um, when I feel like, you know, it's best to do so. So that way it's not like I'm not trying to have to work out and then edit uh, and then audio and then post whatever. It's just work out in the beginning of my day and then towards the end of my day, this is when I post and everything. And then that way when it's at the end of the day, I kind of have a lot of my thoughts in order because I just went through like, you know, a full day of experience and whatnot so it's like i might have more to talk about or just things that might be more uh set in or marinated in my mind uh rather than fresh or whatever so i might have just had just more time to kind of think about certain things and whatnot uh, so like one thing i have thought about um you know i guess the concept of you know going broke to impress other broke people. So this is something that um, I feel like is just, I wouldn't say human nature, but it's just the, the, it's like the mindset of people who are in positions of poverty or maybe not even poverty, just they're not in the best financial situations. And they're not really helping themselves when they're trying to do a lot of things just to impress like other people around them who are like, you know, with on the same level, basically. So it's like, you know, who, who are you trying to impress? Right. Uh, you know, most people who try and act rich or pretend like they're rich or seem like they're wealthy, they will buy things they don't need. Like, you know, these crazy shoes and clothes and extravagant cars and whatnot, um, you know, whilst they can't even put food on the table just so that people in the same tax bracket as them can be like, oh, wow, amazing. Wow, that's amazing. You tend to not see that a lot of, like, rich people, like, that aren't, like, um, you know, rappers or musicians or, like, you know, people that are, like, you know, flamboyant or extravagant, You'll see that they tend to kind of dress normally. An example would be just like Mark Zuckerberg. Um, like what? He just wears like shorts and t-shirts all the time. Um, even some of like, you know, other rich ones like um, Elon Musk, right? Uh, or Jeff Bezos. I mean, they wear suits, but they're not over here, you know, wearing like a bunch of like Gucci, Prada, designer jeans. Um, you know, shades and stuff like that. You know, they they're just existing. I mean, they're rich. They're filthy rich, but they're also not trying to go out and impress others. You know, because I guess that you know they they didn't have that like poverty mindset or that I gotta have it to show it off type of mindset. And I feel like that is the mindset of someone who you know, goes broke, someone who might not manage their finance as well. So what you do is you try and get all the things that make you seem like you're rich, which also is hard to maintain. You know, like you want to get that nice car. Well, now you got to pay the car note and whatever expenses you have to pay for it when like, you know, you have to do maintenance on it. You want to get those expensive clothes. Okay, you want to make sure you don't get them dirty or teared up or tattered up, uh, you know, 
because well then that's what's the point of having those expensive clothes you just you just end up ripping it up um those shoes well you better not walk around in those shoes whatsoever uh, because they're gonna end up getting dirty and stuff like that so it's just like you're buying so many pointless things literally just for people to look at it's not for any actual practical use or anything like that it's literally just for people to see i mean like i have a friend that would that is like he literally sometimes he'll literally just buy clothes just so he could take a picture and put it on instagram and like it's not even on like a a really bad degree it's not like he always is buying clothes just to do that but imagine like I don't know the average like girl on Instagram who posts on Instagram like you know very often or something like that. Imagine how much money she's spending you know buying clothes all the time these designer clothes um it, it just literally just for pictures. Right there's so many things that we do just to impress other people who are within the same field as us. Because Let's be honest, like a really like actual rich person isn't going to fall for that. They're not going to like think that, you know, some guy posting him next to his BMW um, with like, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever type of clothes, whatever nice looking garments that are designer and they're drippy or whatever. I don't think, you know, Jeff Bezos is going to look at that. Oh, yeah, this guy must be rich. He must have a lot of money. You know, he's been like, man, he's made some poor decisions. You know, he's made some pretty poor decisions with his uh, money. And then when you're getting into consumerism, you're kind of just, you know, spending, spending, spending. You're not making anything. You're not creating. You're, I mean, for one, you're making the people who, uh, you know, make the things that you consume filthy rich. And two, you're not making yourself and richer doing that you're not helping yourself you're not growing your mind uh you're not growing your knowledge or or physical or spiritual essence you're kind of almost you know taking a part of your soul and then putting it into these things that are superficial you know for the most part and you know with us wanting to buy more things and own more things it's just gonna kind of tend, you know, to us to having, of course, to upkeep all these things. When you have to upkeep all these things, it's going to have more stress, you know, stress, you're going to be unhappy. And, you know, I just be believe that it's important to try and live more of a simplistic lifestyle, a more simple lifestyle where you're not always trying to own so many things or you're not trying to, you know, just just have everything so you can look like you you just got it all because it's like again you have to maintain all that stuff imagine like the grandma or the auntie that has like all of these little trinkets and, and antiques and stuff like that or like the grandpa or like the dad who has like all these tools and materials and just random stuff collected over the years and then like you will okay well i have to make sure i keep that stuff in a safe place uh, oh, we have to go get something else now? Oh, uh, well, I don't have enough space because all my little trinkets and tools that I've built up over 20 years, they, I can't move any of them whatsoever. So it's like you have to kind of find those things in your life to be like, okay, is this absolutely necessary? No? Okay, I'm just going to give it away or I'm going to throw it away. And then you kind of do that slowly over time especially if you're someone who has just built up a lot of material possessions um if it doesn't have any actual like significant meaning or value to you or any novel use like just think about the things that you use on a daily basis to, to maybe a weekly basis or maybe even monthly right and then compare it to something that you use like barely that you barely ever use right and so let's say, example, let's bring it back to the tools, right? So let's say there's one tool and it's only able to do one job. That's it. It can only do one job. And then let's say there's another tool, but this tool can do three jobs 
just as well as that one tool can do one job. So is there a reason to have that one tool that can only do one job? Or should you just give that tool away or throw that tool away and keep the tool that can do three different jobs? Right, so it's the kind of like, in a way, like simplifying our materials, but maximizing the use of what we are left with. Um, you know, so that way, again, we just own less things. And if you own less things, things become more simple and things are more simple. You become more clear minded, you become more happy. Uh, you know, you're not as stressed. Things become easier, clearer, you know, just think about when maybe you might do some spring cleaning and you're cleaning out your closet or you're cleaning out your room or, you know, whatever type of space in your house and you have, now you have everything all nice and neat and laid out and now you know where everything is, it's organized, you threw away some unnecessary stuff because you didn't need it, things like that. Now it's like, it's like, it's like a, a breath of fresh air. It's like opening a window after having like marinated in your room for like 15 hours straight or something like that. It's like an amazing feeling. It's even satisfying to look at. Like an example, um, with my life, it's like moving my bed out of uh, my room. I like, maybe that's an extreme example, but it's just like having so much of that space now opened up to me and now I can have access to that space and it's no problem, you know, it's like I can utilize that space more productively, I would say, because at first it was just taking up, uh, that space was being taken up by my bed. My bed filled up like maybe, you know, like 75 to 80% of my room, maybe even more than that. And now that I have my bed, I have all this like actual floor space that I can utilize for like exercising, stretching, um, you know, just sitting down on the floor in different positions, you know, just working away on my uh, iPad or whatever. So, like, and again, like how I said before, you know, simplifying our life by removing some material possessions, but keeping what we need and maximizing their use, right? So I have my room. I opened up the space in my room. Now I'm maximizing the use of my room with the added space. So I guess try and apply that, I guess, type of philosophy or whatever to just daily life in general. You know, do you need 15 different like pens and pencils when you go to school? No, you really do not. You might need one or two. Do you really need to have a bunch of, you know, multi-purpose shoes? Well, it really depends, you know, if you just do a lot of things. Um, but you might only really need two pairs of shoes, like, you know, work shoes and then nice casual shoes. And then maybe like dress shoes as the third type of shoe, right? Uh, do you need all those nice clothes and jackets and whatnot and everything? No, you probably do not. I mean, even just to even think about it like this, like people survived off of having like a limited amount of garments. Because, again, that was, like, the normal thing to do. That that was a normal thing to, like, not have that many clothes and whatnot. Because, again, it would take up so much space. And how do you manage all that space when everybody only has so much of their own space, especially if they're, like, living with family members and aunties and grandparents and brothers and sisters, things like that? So it was like, you know, why not get rid of some of the stuff that, you know, we have, I mean, like, you just think about that shirt that your, I don't know, that your friend gave to you, like, six years ago, that you probably outgrown. Do you really still need that shirt? Bro, just give it away. Like, there's no reason why you should still have that shirt. And it's so interesting, too, like, I'll clean out my drawer, and it's like, there's a shirt in there that's like, I don't know, five years old or something like that, and it's like, why do I still have this shirt? I, I haven't worn it in the past, like, year. It's like, what's, what's even the point? So I'm, I just put it in the bag so I can, you know, give those clothes away. That way I can have more space in my dresser 
and having more space in my dresser allows things to be more organized. Things are more organized. Things are more simple. That way there's less stress when I'm looking through clothes. Even an example would be like wearing some of the same type of stuff every day. You know, planning out what you're going to wear each day. And then wearing like very simplistic stuff that won't be so complicated and make you, you know, be all itchy about your decisions and choice and whatnot. Um, it's kind of like eliminating decision fatigue. So what we kind of have is like a type of battery um, when it comes to our willpower and decisions. And the more decisions decisions we have to make, um, the lower that, like, I guess, like that battery drains or whatever. And so we wake up in the morning we have to go to work or we have to go to school. Ooh, what should I wear? What should I wear? Let me see. Let me go through. And then you're going through like three different outfits and you're changing your jacket like five times. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go with this one. You just drain like so much of your battery right there, right? Um, but it's like if you eliminate that by, again, choosing out what you want to wear first or, or, you know, and as well, wearing things that are very simplistic, Wearing some of the same stuff every day, uh, maybe even the same thing every day, right? Like I wear a black t-shirt almost daily and it's so easy. I'm not like, oh man, what shirt should I wear? Oh, should I wear this one? Should I wear this? No, it's just like, let me get the black shirt that I've been wearing, you know, for the past like month or something. So, th th so there's many ways for us to just simplify our way of living. Um, there's, there's so many things we can do. There's so many possibilities. Um, and I feel like a simple life is a, is a, is a happy life, you know, no reason to overcomplicate things or, you know, just put that type of stress on yourself. So that's all, you know, about, that's all about, um, I have to say, if you guys enjoyed the video, see you guys in the next one.